Hey guys, Michael from Copper vs Glass and only five days ago I done one of my first videos on the new iPhone 14 Pro Dynamic Island making its way over to Android. So the application itself was okay, it didn't necessarily have the most amount of features, it was more of a visual tweak as opposed to anything that you could actually interact with and you also had to download it from a third party website instead of from the Play Store. Which a ton of you guys let me know in the comments below that you didn't necessarily enjoy the fact it came from a third party source, it had some strange characters in it that weren't in English and some of you were a little bit worried that it may be taking some information from your phone to wherever in the world. Well, like I mentioned in that video, the Android app developers do work extremely quick and we've got a brand new version called Dynamic Spot which is available on the Play Store and of course will be linked in the description down below. So, let's take a look. Now the application is completely free, however there are in-app purchases. You can purchase all of the features, which some of them are locked, for around $3-$4, to $4, which isn't necessarily that much money, and of course it helps other developer and gives them more of an incentive to keep developing and changing and updating the application. And the main difference between this version and the previous version that we've looked at is the fact that this one you can actually do stuff with the dynamic island. You can long press, you can short press, you can swipe things away, you can have certain things be there, certain things not be there, and just in general customize it a little bit more than what we've had previously. It brings it a lot closer to what Apple are doing with the iPhone 14 Pro. So starting off with the look of the dynamic spot itself. Now you can offset it on the Y axis but still nothing on the X axis in regards to if you don't have a center hole punch cutter like I do on the S22 Plus. If you've got something that's to the left or right you still can't necessarily use this and I think that's just the way that the actual pop-ups themselves appear on the screen. It's very central and I think that if it was moved left or right it would then cut off some of the information from your notifications on the left or right of your screen so again something to keep in mind. However, you can change the sizing both up and down to make it either wider or longer. And of course, you can change the rounding side of things as well. However, for me, I actually found that the best settings were just the standard settings that came with the app. Now, the next feature brings it even closer to the dynamic island, and that's to allow multiple pop-ups on the actual cutout itself. Now, what that means is you can do multitasking with this application. So, for example, if I have Spotify open and I close it down and then I have an alarm going in the background, again, one of the examples that Apple used, then again, you've got both of those applications open at the top. You can interact with them, open them, go into sort of a widget style, or just open the application in total, or dismiss it. Like I say, there's tons of options. Now with the paid version, you can also change what happens when you long press or single press on one of the notifications as well. Now by default, it's open so that if you do a single press, that opens the application, and then a long press actually then takes you into the actual notification itself. For me, and kind of like on the iPhone, I would rather be the other way around. So if I do a short press on it, it opens the widget for that quick access, and then a long press which is a bit more meaningful takes you into the application to change some other things that you may need to and then you've also got some options for auto hide and auto expand as well now like i mentioned the majority of the things that you can change are going to be behind that paywall however you can actually use the application completely fine without paying so again if you don't necessarily want to help out the developer or you don't have the spare change then using the free version you can still do most things it's just not as customizable and in all honesty guys, although it's one of the first, it's probably the best version of the Dynamic Island that we've now got on Android. Now yes, some people necessarily aren't a massive fan, and again my previous video that I've done, some people in the comments section didn't necessarily like the new design of the Dynamic Island on the iPhone, and they didn't necessarily want it to come over to Android either, however some Android manufacturers like Xiaomi and Realme have actually asked some questions within their users in regards to what they think of the Dynamic Island. Now that in my head actually kind of gets me thinking that maybe they're going to be some of the first to bring it over to Android natively on a device, which is kind of what I mentioned in my previous video. In that video I mentioned the fact that Apple can be game changers when it comes to new features, taking things away or adding things, and I actually think that Dynamic Island is going to be one of those things that we do start to see trickle down onto the next line of Android devices. Now also interacting with the widgets is really good as well. So for example again if I open Spotify, start to play some music and then close out of it, you can see then that it stays at the top on the spot there and if I long press it brings up kind of a widget style where I can go through and change tracks, play or pause the music, scrub through or if I wanted to I can then just single tap and it will open Spotify. Another example is if I go into my clock application and set an alarm and then again swipe away from it, it's then going to put it up there on the dynamic spot as well and again exactly the same thing. A long press brings up a widget where you can change or readjust or restart the actual timer or just pressing on it will open back into the clock application. 
Now the actual application is called Dynamic Spot Multitasking. And again, that's one of the features that you can do as well. So if I do both of those previous features that I've done before, open Spotify and play some music, and also then go into my alarm and then set a timer, then again, you can see it brings both of them to the top of the screen and you can interact with them kind of going back and forth between the two. Pretty much exactly how it does it on the iPhone. Now I do also like the fact that you can actually choose which applications do or don't appear within the actual dynamic spot itself. So again, back in the settings, if you don't want everything to appear there all at once. So for example, on Android, you get a lot of notifications pretty much daily about the weather and things or some Play Store updates and things like that. You can have those not appear whatsoever. However, the more important things like WhatsApp, Instagram, Twitter, music, timers, all that sort of stuff, you can then just tick each individual application that you want to appear on the dynamic spot. And that's actually going to do it, guys, on Dynamic Island for Android 2.0. Now, although it's not necessarily from the same developer, I'm still calling it 2.0 because I'm going to be following this along moving forward until a manufacturer comes out of it. So if, for example, a ton of new applications appear on the Play Store, I'm going to try and find which one works the best and which one replicates that feature from the iPhone the best on Android. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up down below. And if you've got any questions, comments, or any other recommendations for apps for me to look at here on the channel, let me know in the comment section down below, along with what you actually think of the Dynamic Island and if you want it moving forward. If you're not already subscribed, now is a great time to do so. And once you hit that subscribe button, don't forget to turn on notifications so you're notified any time I post a video here on the channel. I'm Michael from Copper vs Glass. Thanks very much for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next video.